Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into differential equations and now look at example three of the logistic equation video series. And again, the logistic equation is just a model for population growth. And in this example, we will look at uh, approximating the logistic equation using Euler's method. So basically, the Euler's method is one method to obtain numerical estimates for solutions to the logistic differential equation at uh, specific times. And again, make sure to watch my early videos in the video links below to learn more about Euler's method and the differential equations, logistic equation that I went over before. You had to get caught up on this. So let's look at this example. It states, use Euler's method with step sizes 20, 10, 5, 1, and 0.1 to estimate the population sizes P40 and P80. In other words, population at the time is 40 times 80. Uh, you could use whatever units you want. You could say years or whatnot. So it's unitless for, for now. So where P is the solution of the initial value problem, and again, this is the same one in example one. Uh, dp over dt equals to 0 0.08 p times 1 minus p over 1000 and then the initial value is p of 0 is 100. So first thing we're going to do is well let's just recap or recap uh, from my earlier video so recap on Euler's method and again make sure to watch it in my earlier videos in a video link below if you haven't already. So to recap on it on Euler's method, basically it's a way of approximating by using the previous value uh, or previous values approximation. Initially you would start from the initial value and then keep moving on and on. So y of n would equal to y of n minus 1 plus h, which is the step size, times by the derivative of the previous function, I mean of the previous data point so if, if this was y1, then the previous derivative would be when uh, p of 0, y of 0 is equal to 100. In this case, y would be p. But anyways, for general function y, we have this f of x n minus 1, y n minus 1. And the reason it's x n y is a function of it, because usually differential equations are written like this, where the derivative is equal to, and it's usually a function of both the uh, x and y, uh, variables in this case p of t but the logistic equation in this one it's uh, actually just a function of p because as previously stated in my last video it's autonomous meaning it does not depend on time but for general you have a function of x and y so I'll write where where basically h is equal to the step size and then n is just an in integer n is just one two three etc. Just an integer. And then basically the f of x and y is equal to the derivative y prime or just write it as y dy over dx like that. Yeah so for our case uh, we're going to apply Euler's method to the population size so we'll write thus so instead of y we have p so p of n is equal to p of n minus 1 and then we're going to add plus h to step size times it by f of uh, t n minus 1 p n minus 1 like that where in our case the uh, derivative or this function f of t n minus 1 p n minus 1 because again from this this equation this is uh, this is just dependent on the population and not the time so what that means is that this function is uh, actually, so you could simplify it as a function of the population size it alone without the time. So this equals to f of p n minus 1, which again equals to p prime uh, n minus 1, or dp n minus 1 over dt, and where this just equals to 0 0.08, and then p n minus 1 times it by 1 minus or 1 minus pn minus 1 over a thousand. So we just all we're doing is plugging in the previous population of the iteration and then moving forward. So plug that in and then apply the um, step size and the previous value and we move fo forward. Yeah, and this will make more sense as I get through in this example further into it. And again make sure to watch my uh, Euler's method video uh, just because it explains it a lot better and you'll see why this all works. So, 
Let's look at the first step size, the biggest one, 20. So h of 20, so for h equals to 20. Yeah, so for h equals to 20, well, let's start off with what we know. So we know that, well, p of zero, this equals two, and I'll write this as p zero just for consistency, and this equals to 100. That's just our initial value. And then afterwards, we apply the Euler's method. So basically here, actually I'll erase that, I'll get to that in a bit. Basically now we go to p of one, this equals two p of zero plus h of now f of, yeah, f of p of zero. That's because, well, uh, this one is just a function of the population. So n is this and we all subtract one. So if n is one, one minus one is zero. So we have this like that. And in other words, this equals to, well, 100 plus 20, and then though this is a function of 100, when we plug in the previous value. So all we're doing is we take this initial value and then put it into this formula to get a new value. So this one would equal to 100 plus 20, and then 0 0.08, uh, this is gonna be f of 100, so 0 0.08 times it by 100. I'll put this in a big bracket like that. And now we're gonna have one minus 100 over 1,000, like this. And now if you put this in the calculator, what we end up getting is 244. And I'll show you the calculations in a bit. I mean, the uh, calculator calculations in a bit, because uh, I made an Excel sheet for that. But uh, so before that, just assume it's, uh, just agree that it's 244. Uh, so, and what this means is this P of one, because we moved by a step size of 20, so what we're approximating is P of 20. So that is that, so P of zero is P zero, P of 20, so we also move up by a step size. And now if we do the same thing to get P of two, what we end up getting is, well, P of 40 is roughly equal to P of two, which equals two, actually roughly equals two, because it's not as, uh, whole number as 244, what we get is 539.14, and this is P of 40, what we wanted. Circle this. So this is what we wanted, and I'll get to these calculations uh, in a bit. But basically, you, you see the idea. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did in this one, but instead of putting 100, we put in 244 in our new value. And then likewise, for P of three, we plug in this uh, 539.14 inside, and get further answers. So P of 60 now, if we move up by step size 20, we get P of three is equal to roughly uh, 936.69, like that. And then finally we get P of 80, this one equals two P of four, and this is 1032.57. Like that, and the values we wanted for uh, step size of 20 is the P of 40 and P of 80, like that. And we'll compare them all for uh, the other values soon. So in this uh, case right here, so thus for uh, H equals to 20 or step size of 20, we have P of 40 is equal to roughly, I'll round this up, 539 and uh, P of 80, the population after time is 80, is just round this to, um, yeah, round this one to, uh, like this, 10032, or 1032. And this is our answer for uh, the first part, step size 20. And et cetera, you could do this uh, for the next ones, and then uh, you can get them all. Yes, yeah, so you could do these all manually, but again, I like I explained, I did, made an Excel sheet, so let's get to that right here. So here's the Excel sheet that I made, and basically here's our differential equation, dB over dt, is just what we had written down, so that's our initial value problem. And then Euler's method is this right here, and again, in our case, uh, t n minus one, I, I mean, this function f just depends on the p instead of the, instead of the t. So for H20, here are those calculations. So for the first one we have here, yeah, so this value right here initially is 100, and then this one we plug those in, so this equals to, well, uh, 100. Uh, I mean, this is C13, this is, yeah, 100, P is zero, so this is N0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
when n is zero, that's 100. And then, so we plug in this, the step size 20, that's C11, C11, etc. And then C113, that's just this, 100, one minus 100 divided by 1,000. So we, what we end up getting is 24400. Zero, zero. Then likewise, now this one, instead of using 100, we use this C14, which is 244. So as you can see, the iteration process just goes down like that. And this is for 0, 2, 4, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. And there is our uh, 13157, 93669, etc. Now if we use a step size of 10, and I'll get to the right side in a bit. What we end up getting now is, because it's 10, uh, and then this P, this, um, these approximations are step size of 10, so we go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. As you can see, there's double the iterations, there's eight. And the same idea, we just, uh, we, all, we, all we do is always take the previous number and then blow it, uh, throw it inside. And we get this approximation for P8997, and this one is 647 there. Same with thing with the five. So notice how, how we're always doubling here. So we go from, uh, well, because we're dividing by two, so we double the iterations. So if, if H is five, the step size, we have double the iterations, so five, 10, 15, 20, all the way to 80. And now we get this 990 over there, and then also for 4695. And then going further down, we have H equals to one. Uh, so the step size of one, and as you see, this is going to have 80 iterations because there's one, two, three, four, five, and going all the way down, uh, and then we finally get a 986 value. And then when we get really fine st uh, step size of 0.1, so this means well, there's going to be 10 times the uh, step size of one, so 800. So there's going to be 800 iterations. So just scroll off, just keep scrolling, keep scrolling and keep scrolling as you can see we're going really really fine step size oh whoops Let's see where's the number and we get about 985 as you can see it's getting closer and closer to uh, this value 985 so let's go all the way back uh, let's keep scrolling so when we go all the way back here and summarize all these values so for step size of 20 what we were asked for is this one, this just equals to all well, this uh, P of 40. So this is the uh, P of 40 estimates so of 539, 647, and uh, this one's 731. As you can see, the 731 is getting closer and closer to this number, and this one has 800 iterations, so this is pretty pretty close to the exact. And then P of 80, as you can see, goes from 1032, and keeps going down, down, and 985, which looks reasonable. And now if we were to graph all these out, we get graph looks like this. Now the bottom one, that is our H of 20, and as you can see, it's getting closer and closer to this, uh, at this step size of 0.1, which is all lining up to it like that. And now, yeah, and now for completeness, I just copy and pasted this all here, because again, you can uh, download these exact notes in the link below. So what we have is here's our graph, here's our table that we were asked for, and everything's getting closer and closer to this 731 at this P40 estimate. In other words, you go to this P40, we're getting closer and closer to this value right here, which is about 731. And then also uh, this P80 estimate, we're getting closer and closer to this 985. So this one is overestimate. Because remember, the carrying capacity is equal to 1,000. That's just that is just this one uh, over a thousand number of the logistic equation that's the carrying capacity over there so we can't actually go above it according to this model so it should be leveling off under a thousand but if you were to go into infinity time we're going to approach a thousand but it never actually approaches according to the model and then this one is all going down closer and closer to this uh, 985 number and this one is h equals to 20. And then the finest one is h equals to 0.1. And as you can see, the uh, point, I mean the one is very, very close. h equals to one. So the models for, I'll write h equals to one is very close to h equals to 0.1. Like that, I'll just write this 
Yeah, so as you can see, it's getting closer and closer. So if you were to go 0 0.0001, it would still look very, very similar, as you see, just because it's getting closer and closer. And it, again, it all starts off with this 100 as our P of 0, like that. And another thing I want to do is, is just check up on the previous uh, video. So if we go to example 1, so this is the exact same formula, I mean the exact same um, logistic equation that we went over in example 1. And this one we graphed it uh, just using the, the direction field again, make sure to watch this. And then we would just plot this out manually. So manually this is the graph for 100. It looks, it looks pretty much similar when you go to 100 up to this 80. It looks very similar to our, uh, our graph. Let's just go back here. So yeah, just graphing manually looks similar to this, like that. Anyways, that is all for today. I just wanted to show up that direction field as well. It was like, uh, yeah, that's all for today. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed. And again, uh, make sure to check out my early videos in the link below to get a better idea on the Euler's method and the other logistic equation videos if you haven't already done so. And like always, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.